Hi, so in this video I'm going to start showing you the basics of GeoGebra. GeoGebra can be a really powerful tool for us to visualize what's going on in 3D space. You may have used it before in some of your other math classes. All I've done so far is Google it. If you're like, well, I just like Desmos better, blah, 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 blah. Desmos doesn't currently have a nice 3D option. If you Google 3D Desmos, you get some interesting applets that people made. But we're really going to advertise GeoGebra in this class, and I'm not getting any money. So here we go. Before I click anything, I'm going to click to the 3D calculator. This is what you want to look at. This is the primary thing we're going to graph with in this class if we decide to use the calculator. So what you can see is a 3D coordinate plane like we saw in the last video. What you have here is the x-axis in red. I'm going to align it so it goes in the right way. The y-axis in green and the z-axis at top. So if you watch that first video I made, or the first little part of 3-1, this is how our book will make the X and Y axis. Again, this is the X over here, this is the Y, and this is the Z. This would be the other way of looking at things where the X and the, sorry, where the Z and the Y kind of look like a X, Y axis used to. And then the x-axis is coming into and out of the screen or the board, I might have said in previous life. And what we have here is a nice 3D plane. You can spin it using the mouse clicks and moving it around. It can help you visualize it. The Sorry, it's a 3D space. I keep saying 3D plane. My bad. The xy plane, that's what we think of it, is in gray here. So here's the xy plane. Here's what you used to look at. I can even get it to look like the X, Y plane. This is a truly top down view though. So again, here's the positive Y axis in green. Here's the positive X axis in red. And the Z axis is now coming into and out of the plane. That's not how we'll look at things anymore though. I'm just showing you that really quick. For other reference, let's see. This would be the true Y, Z axis. So here's Y in green, here's Z in blue, and X is just kind of directly coming at us now. And then of course you can have the, uh, yikes, right? Um, can I do it? Do I have the spatial knowledge? All right, there we go. Fine motor control, the XZ plane here. And we're gonna graph these more in a second, but I'm just trying to show you what we're looking at here. And all of them combine to make a XYZ. And this is what I was saying in the video where I'm talking about staring top down. I hope you can imagine that better. It's like our camera is in the first octant all the way zoomed out, all right? So this first octant, here's the first quadrant. What was the first quadrant? And the first octant is the space above that. So if I wanted to graph the point, two comma three comma four, there's our point with its projection two comma three comma zero below it. So in class, that's what we graphed in the video, I guess. That's what class is nowadays. So um, that's what we're talking about. And so you see how if I graph this line going from the origin to that B and I graph that same line going back to four, those two lines are parallel. And that's the kind of parallelogram we were drawing to box them out. These dials are how you can shut things on and off. I also want to show you the planes more specifically. So as advertised, Z equals zero won't graph anything because it already is here. It's kind of showing you a weird thing. It's floating in and out of the gray zone. I'm not gonna look at that too long. That's the X, Y plane though. X equals zero. So again, it's the places where the red axis is dead. Okay, there's zero on the red axis and we're just going anything along the X, Y. So it's like a wall there. I hope we can see that. You can feel free to play around with this later. 
And we'll also do y equals zero. The other wall, so to speak. I feel like the color is looking ugly right now, but. So again, there's nothing on the y, it's just along the x and along the z. So those are our walls. I'll stop the rotation with another mouse click. So some of the other things I wanted to show you, but I like the drawing skills, is what would like x equals two look like? X equals, so let's think about it this first. If I think about what x equals two is going to look like, it should be all of the points with the x coordinate two, but the y and z coordinate could be anything like you wanted it to be. So just think about that. Three, two, one. You should have said it would be parallel to the YZ plane. So notice how this is two steps out. It's all of the points in the universe with the X coordinate of two and the Y and Z coordinates could be whatever they want. So it's going to be exactly parallel to where that YZ plane would be. Okay. Now what would happen if I change that to a Y equals two? Think about what that would happen if I change that to a y equals two. Three, two, one. Did you guess it? It's parallel to the xz plane. It's just shifting things out because the xz plane is where the y is equal to zero. So this is shifted out. And I'm pretty sure you can guess where I'm going with this. What about the z equals two line? Sorry, they're not lines. That's the key idea. They're not lines, they're planes. So what would the Z equals to plane look like? Floating right above where we used to spend all of our happy days, right above that XY plane, two units up. A perfectly parallel plane to the XY plane. Beautiful. Besides those basic planes, you could graph things like X equals Y. So I'll talk more about why this surface looks the way it does, Yikes. but it's a plane. It's going along the line X equals Y or Y equals X. Like back in the before time, you can probably see that thin blue line here. That would be the line Y equals X. But now that line is allowed to extend into a third dimension and becomes its true form, the plane, because the Z coordinate can now do whatever it wants so it can lift that line up and down. If you ever want to delete an object, you can just hit delete. That's an alternative to hiding the objects. I don't know what it's asking me to delete now. Nothing. Trash. I guess I'll start by showing you x squared plus y squared. You have to sometimes hit the right arrow to escape out of the exponent. Okay, I did that, but it won't let me. Plus y squared. Okay, so that's a paraboloid, but I don't want to show you that right now. Pretend you don't see what you're seeing, but I'll tell you that's a paraboloid. Neato plus z squared equals 1. So there's what we would call the unit sphere. He's just living at the origin. I zoomed in with my mouse wheel. If you don't have a mouse wheel, I don't know. Probably this button. Womp, womp. All right, so be careful with that because now my axes are kind of distorted. That's the unit sphere. So if I change this to something like uh, 16, my radius will be four. And now you can see that we're a unit sphere. Again, these spheres are not solid. They're not solid. And if I wanted to start shifting things around, I would just add parentheses x minus 2, we'll shift this two units in the x direction. Okay, so I'll graph the, the 2, 0, 0, just so you can see where the center is right there. Okay, and if I want to shift this one unit back along the y-axis, I would add 1 plus the y. And let's say I wanted to move it four units up the Z. And now we are at two, one, four. 
And that's in the center of that ball. Oh, no, it's not. Two, negative one, four. That's in the center of the ball. I was like, wait, it doesn't look right. Now it looks right. And so if we start thinking about things that we had graphed in the video. We can graph things we had in the video like 2x squared plus escape out of the exponent 2y squared whoops so embarrassing can't type again that's a paraboloid we'll study those later 2z squared and now it won't graph anything because it can't assume you're a function minus 6x minus 4y plus 2z equals 1 and there's our centered sphere offset from most of the axes I forget where the center was exactly. Some ugly number, like five halves, negative one half, five halves or something like that. I'm not sure. All right, so there we are. Sorry, three halves, one, negative one half. That was the, the center. And the radius is like root 13 over two. I'm not saying you can see that perfectly. These are not solid, it is just a surface. And that's, I think, everything I want to show you with GeoGebra right now. Please feel free to play around with GeoGebra and experiment with it. The 3D calculator is very powerful. You don't have to download anything, but I do think there is an app if you wanted to get one for your phone. All right. Thanks for your attention. Have a nice day.